clean cut without cutting corners. Quality blended with competition. A gun of all trades for a game of all flavors. Hi. Six Snipes here with the fifth and final episode of my short stint doing Battlefield 4 content. The past videos have been a real blast to make and those of you who do play Battlefield have been kind enough not to rage at me for not picking up the most popular of guns. Fuck you and I'll see you tomorrow. Wrapping up this miniseries on my favorite carbines with one of the rather earlier game options and a classic at that. Taking a look at the SG-553, I'm Six Snipes and you're watching Gun Guide. The SG or L SIG 553 is a rifle straight from the magical world of Switzerland, produced by the Swiss Army AG, which was formerly dubbed the Schweizerische Industriegesellschaft, while the gun was classified as a Sturmgewehr, an extension of the 550 line of rifles and direct improvement off of the similarly recognizable SIG 552 Commando. It follows the NATO agenda of 556 caliber service rifles and has solidified itself as a solid addition to just about any game. The third carbine and second unlock of your gun progression in the category, you can get this piece in no time at all, and what a piece it is. Mm, that's a 10. I still remember Battlefield noob me trying this out so many years ago, thinking it was just the coolest. Coming straight from Siege, it was nice to see a similar familiar face, and for the longest time it held the record for my longest kill streak. I remember the arbitrary Metro game, grinding down offensive, and realizing for the first time how much the sweet release of serotonin made me forget about the suffering we do in life. I believe I got 16 kills and it was pretty epic. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Nostalgia aside, coming back to this gun, it still is crisp as I remember, but having known this was going to be the topic of the last episode of this season, I have to confess, there were several things which I count as drawbacks and took me by surprise, which we'll get to. Now, this gun starts out as a pretty standard package, run-of-the-mill carbine, generalist approach to design with a highly conventionalist profile, much like you see with many nation service weapons. Coming in at what can be certainly called the higher scale of fire rate, 830 rounds per minute is enough to kill fast. However, unlike other previously discussed versions, this actually creates recoil not entirely uncontrollable, but certainly not inconsequential. <laughs> I used to talk mad trash about how people who really couldn't handle a carbine in this game, so either this gun's got a lot, or I'm losing my touch after so many days away from Sandstorm. Furthermore, is the issue common to any high rate of fire gun, that the sheer volume of rounds coming out depletes that standard size 30 rounds to zero pretty quick. If I wasn't careful, I found myself running out of ammo way too soon in many scenarios, which was very unhelpful and particularly common when I was getting adjusted to the drift of the weapon's recoil pattern and odd bullet spread. The reload may be fast enough to save you sometimes, but regardless of speed, it's virtually never a good situation finding yourself face to face with an enemy with no magazine in your gun. Why are you gay? Who says I'm gay? You are gay. All these factors, you might wonder why I do in fact like this. And for the first hours of when I picked it up again, so did I. However, having come back fresh the next day and sticking it through, I have to say there is an astounding silver lining to this cloud. Because given proper attachment management and practice, this weapon is as good as any other. And to be perfectly honest, having been the gun which trained me to understand the way weapons work in Battlefield, much like the Groza, I couldn't recommend it more. Highly attachment friendly, anything between optics and foregrips are all tangibly impactful on this thing. I can't tell you how much it helps to have a stubby grip on this every once in a while, or the stealth of a suppressor, or else range benefits of the ever so handy auto spotter. Speaking of range, this thing performs admirably. As a matter of fact, unlike a lot of the other guns, not only could it land hits from the distance, but I wasn't shy to use some of the more magnified optics, such as the ACOG. As for muzzle preference, I alternated between the old reliable heavy barrel for that extra shot accuracy and the suppressor because of just how cool it is to run within close quarters with a dampened gunshot report. Mad flanks did happen with this gun and I have to confess it's very well suited behind enemy lines placing claymore traps and knifing the occasional oblivious noob here and there. That you um you had you you 
you could you do you wait you even with that increased drag the bullets turn out just fine on this thing with a little management hit the ranges you'd expect one of the nicer features about battlefield is that suppressors don't directly reduce the raw damage output of your weapon it just affects the more minor factors such as velocity and direction hip fire is manageable however i found myself much preferring to ads whenever possible even with zoom optics the bullets on this thing like to seemingly flake off at some of the more awkward moments and i'll take all the accuracy i can when it comes down to it having obtained the dog tag so long ago with all the attachments ready to use from the get-go in this video was indeed very nice getting to relearn the nuances was a chore but doing so i couldn't help but come to appreciate the merits of a gun that takes practice to make perfect refining your strategy and utilizing the strengths of this is quite rewarding a more high skill investment of time and practice with the return of very efficient slaughter any newcomer can hose down an individual with this, but tap firing, short bursting, and conserving ammo all while managing the recoil for a second and third kill takes practice and aim, and as to not waste all those rounds. At ranges, it certainly becomes more challenging, but with a lot of use I found, it's definitely more of a ranged gun than not. It performs far better past point blank and short range conflict with medium distances, meaning that city streets separating you from your target creates a threat for them. The weapon plays its effective range very well, actually, once you realize this. It's not really the sort of thing you bring to slay out in Operation Locker, more of a gun that's tight on Lanking or El Zavad. Overall, I think it takes the best of both worlds and brings them together, forming a more medium range asset for the broader maps, but still capable of holding its own elsewhere on either front. Because of this and all the previously mentioned assets, I will say it's the most well-rounded of the carvines covered on this list. For the last time in the series, I'll tell you that supplementing this with a higher skill pick secondary like the Unica will absolutely give you the aim training and reflexes you need to both improve those shooting skills with the more conventional guns as well as land those one-shot hits every so often. And that's the SG-553. Highly effective, highly regarded, and ready to dish out the pain from a ways away, the wide flanks, and the long hallways. It's probably one of my more favorite weapons, and I'm happy to bring it out every so often. That's also all I have to have for this season. I'm really enjoying doing Battlefield 4 videos, but the sad reality is that these haven't really performed to my liking, at least compared to my insurgency content, so in all honesty, it's going to be a minute before you see any more Battlefield videos, as I make my way back to insurgency to deliver the fans what they've been asking for for a while now. After some reevaluation, I want to come back with a plan of attack and tackle this game in the future, if you guys are willing to keep watching like those of you who've made it this far into the video do. As a matter of fact, if this video gets to 200 likes, you can bet I'll do another series in the title sometime soon. But otherwise, or else, until then, you know that, as always, I'm Six Snipes. This is the incredible SG-553, and you've all been watching Undenied. I'll see you out there on the battlefield. Why are we still here?